do you feel like a zombie in the morning even after sleeping for hours? Do you spend countless hours staring at the ceiling and praying that the sleep will come? And when the sleep finally comes, do you wake up in the middle of the night feeling like confused and disoriented but? Or maybe you are the type who suddenly grains superhuman power at 3 a.m. ready to take the award when everyone is sound asleep. Well, yes, PCOS can really mess up your sleep and left you feeling exhausted. Welcome to Holistic Omaris. I am Agnese and every week I post new video about PCOS struggle, PCOS research, PCOS management. So if you want to learn more about PCOS, definitely subscribe to my channel. If you have PCOS and you're experiencing difficulty falling asleep, you are not alone. Um, sleeping disturbances is a common symptom of PCOS that can have a huge impact on quality of your life. In this video, we are going to explore the connection between PCOS and sleep and four important behavioral changes that can improve your sleep. Recognized sleep disturbances include insufficient sleep and the feature of insomnia, such as difficulty falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep, waking up too early or unrefreshing sleep. Over one third of women with PCOS have difficulty of falling asleep and one in five frequently wake up in the middle of the night and cannot resume sleep within a short time period. The hallmark of sleep disturbances include daytime fatigue, sleepiness, and irritability. As you already know, PCOS is a complex condition and can disturb sleep in several ways. Elevated levels of androgens and insulin resistance, very common in women with PCOS, can alter sleep patterns and make it difficult to fall asleep and to stay asleep. Changes in cortisol and melatonin can also disturb sleep by changing body natural rhythm. Psychological and behavioral factors such as depression, anxiety, worry, a sedentary lifestyle, alcohol consumption, and smoking can also disturb sleep quality. However, the link between PCOS and sleep disturbances go beyond that factors. The circadian wake-sleep cycle, uh, which involves peripheral regulation through neurotransmitters and neuromodulators like melatonin and cytokines can also play a role. Women with PCOS have been found to have elevated level of melatonin, metabolite, six sufflatoxin melatonin in both day and night urine sample. Altered cytokines profile in women with PCOS can also contribute to sleep disturbances. Furthermore, studies have shown that women with PCOS have 10 times higher risk of having obstructive sleep apnea compared to women without PCOS. Further highlighting the significant impact of PCOS on sleep health. So let's move on to practical things that you can do to improve your circadian rhythm. Use morning and evening light exposure. To optimize the circadian rhythm as a woman with PCOS, it's so important to get light exposure in the morning and in the late afternoon. Try to go outside in the morning within 30 to 60 minutes of waking up. If you wake up before the sun is out, turn on all the artificial light and then go out when the sun rises. In the late afternoon, try to see the sun again prior to the sunset. Try to get 10 minutes of morning and late afternoon light exposure on sunny days and on cloudy days, try for 20 minutes. It's best to avoid wearing sunglasses or the cap during this practice if you can. Just make sure not to look directly to the sun or any bright light. So get out of the sun and get this race. Maintain a consistent sleep schedule. 
Maintaining consistent sleep schedule, it is important and helpful for women with PCOS. Try to wake up at the same time every day and go to sleep when you start to feel sleepy naturally. Because ignoring your feelings of sleepiness and staying up too late can disturb your sleep cycle, leading to difficulties of falling back asleep and worsening the sleep disturbances associated with polycystic ovary syndrome. Avoid caffeine around six hours before going to sleep. For women with PCOS who already have problem of falling asleep, avoiding caffeine before going to bed can help and improve the good night rest. Caffeine is a stimulant that interferes with sleep by blocking the action of adenosine. Adenosine is a chemical in the brain that promotes the droniness and sleepiness. When caffeine is consumed before going to sleep, it can make you awake by increasing alteriness, delaying the onset of sleep, and reducing amount of time of deep restful sleep. It can also make you wake up more frequently in the middle of the night or make you wake up in the morning completely exhausted. It's generally recommended to avoid caffeine around 6 to 10 hours before bedtime. I am having my last coffee 10 hours before going to sleep because I know that I am very sensitive to caffeine. But it is important to listen to your body and experiment or how far you need to push or avoid your caffeine before going to sleep to get a good night rest. Follow natural light pattern. Following natural light patterns is what our ancestors would have done since they didn't have access to artificial lighting like we do today. Our bodies are designed to respond to natural light cues to regulate the circadian rhythm and wake sleep cycles. By following natural light patterns, we are mimicking the light dark cycle that our ancestors did. And by that, we are optimizing our sleep and overall health. So what I do myself, I put all the artificial light overhead in the morning, mimicking the sunlight and slowly I switching off during the day. After lunch, I switch off all the overhead lights and use lights that are less bright and are on my eye level. I also start to dim my laptop and my phone screens and use the blue light blocker. And in the evening, I almost switch off all my lights using as little light just to move around safely. My friends laugh at me, calling me a bat, but if you want to have the good baby sleep, it's better to avoid the bright lights, especially the overhead or artificial lights between hours the 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. There are other things that you can do to improve your sleep, but for now, just try these four things and observe the difference. Sometimes we try to do too many things at the same time, and the only thing we get is our feeling of overhand and stress that disturb our sleep further. I believe in small and sustainable steps to manage PCOS. If you would like to know more, you can always follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my email list where I always share more PCOS tips. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel here to don't miss on the knowledge and like, comment and share with other women with PCOS and I will see you in next video. Bye bye.